So this year, Easter will be held on April 4th, 2021. If you happen to be watching this sometime in the future, Easter will also be held on the 17th of April, 2022, the 9th of April, 2023, and the 31st of March, 2024. In fact, here's a plot of all the dates of Easter for the next 100 years. To be completely honest, the only real connection between these dates seems to be that they are roughly within a month from each other. So what gives? Why is Easter hopping around so much? Well, the short answer is that Easter is held the Sunday after the first full moon of spring, sometimes also called the Pascal full moon, and determining this date years in advance is actually a surprisingly complicated calculation. In fact, it's so complicated that it even stumped mathematical superheroes like Frederick Gauss. The legend goes that Gauss didn't know his real birthday. It's said that after he used his algorithm to calculate the date of Easter, he then went back to find what his real birthday actually was. Of course, the story could have gone the other way around, where he wanted to figure out what his birthday was and in the process randomly found Easter. Either way, it's an interesting story. If you're interested in implementing Gauss's Easter algorithm for yourself, feel free to head on over to the algorithm archive at the end of this video, where we show the mathematical underbelly of the method. Here, I simply want to impress on you how deceptively challenging this problem actually is. In essence, the method is split up into two parts. The first part is finding the first full moon after March 21st, and the second part is finding the following Sunday. Let's start with the full moon bit. This involves keeping track of two incredibly different calendar systems. The solar calendar, also called the Gregorian calendar after Pope Gregory XIII, which corresponds to the time it takes for the Earth to revolve around the Sun, and the lunar calendar, which corresponds to the time it takes for the moon to revolve around the Earth. Most people know the Gregorian calendar fairly well. It's what we use every day. There are 365 days a year split into 12 months. The justification for this is that it takes 365 days for the Earth to revolve around the Sun. This is mostly correct, but there's of course a small hitch. It actually takes roughly 365.2425 days to revolve around the sun, which is why every four years, including last year, 2020, we need to add a day to the calendar on February 29th. These days are of course called leap days, and with this change, the calendar system would have roughly 365.25 days on average. To get that extra bit of precision to 365.2425, we actually do not celebrate leap days when the year is a multiple of 100, unless it's a multiple of 400. This is why a leap day was celebrated in 2020 and 2000, but not 1900. If at this point you're starting to feel like your favorite calendar system is held together by string, duct tape, and just a little bit of bubblegum, I reckon I'd believe you. Now onto the lunar calendar. It takes roughly 27.5 days for the moon to revolve around the Earth. However, lunar phases are closer to 29.5 days apart. This is because the moon is revolving around the Earth, which is also revolving around the Sun. To get the same lunar phase, the moon needs to be in the same position relative to the line between the Sun and the Earth. This is called a synodic month. Unfortunately, the lunar and Gregorian calendars do not properly line up every year. If we keep track of the revolutions of the Earth and the Moon in space, marking their initial positions and then again after 12 lunar months and 12 Gregorian months, we'll find that the lunar calendar is about 11 days behind the solar one. In addition, the lunar phase will be completely different than it was on the same day a year before. It will actually take 19 years for the lunar phase to resynchronize to be in the same phase on the same day. This 19-year cycle is known as the Metonic Cycle, and by using it appropriately, we can transition between lunar and solar calendars. Essentially, if we're given a solar date, let's say March 21st, the moon could be in one of 19 different positions. By knowing which year we're on in the metonic cycle, we also know which of those 19 options will be the true lunar phase on that day. This is a relatively straightforward way to find the lunar phase on each solar day and allows us to find the next full moon by looking forward a few days from March 21st. And that's that in a way. We can now calculate when the next full moon is going to occur. All that's left is finding the next Sunday. So how exactly do we do that? Well, imagine we found the next full moon after March 21st to be on the 28th, as it is for 2021. 
we know that this is the 87th day of the year, so what day of the week is that? Well, I know it's one of seven days, so I might naively take a mod 7 of it to get three, which would put it on a Wednesday. The problem is that March 28th is not on a Wednesday this year, it's actually on a Sunday. The reason for this is that January 1st was a Friday, so we started counting at 5 for Friday this year. This means that we need to add that offset for the first day of the year to our counter. Also, because modulus operations work from 0 to 6, there's an off by 1 error if we don't subtract 1 somewhere in the expression. So now the next question is, how do we know our offset for any given year? Well, that's actually straightforward when you know a simple trait of the Gregorian calendar. Days of the week shift by one each year, with exception of leap years. For example, January 1st, 2017 was a Sunday. January 1st, 2018 was a Monday. January 1st, 2019 was a Tuesday. 2020 was a Wednesday, and 2021 was a Friday, skipping two days because 2020 was a leap year. Taking all of this into account, as long as we knew where any arbitrary date fell on the weekly schedule sometime in the past, we can create an offset for that year and then add those corrections to find the next Sunday. And again, there's a lot more information on the algorithm archive for this. I guess if there's a point to this video, it's that calendar systems are tricky, namely because they rely on some sort of physical event, like the movement of celestial bodies, and transforming between calendar systems is even trickier still. Sure, nowadays this algorithm could definitely be implemented on a calculator, but it's no doubt we're celebrating for its ingenuity at the time of creation. I mean, I actually spent months trying to figure all of this out last year, and by the time it was done, it was after Easter, so I waited until this year to upload it. Sure, the algorithm is 200 years old, but Gauss is a genius and I'm not, it takes me time to figure everything out. No matter the case, due to its importance and complexity, determining the date of Easter is no doubt Christianity's most important algorithm. Anyway, that's all for now. If you like this content and you want to see it continue in the future, please consider supporting me on either GitHub sponsors or Patreon. Also, thanks to all my Patreon supporters, including Mossy, who apparently really likes cake, so here you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.